Um, today we're going to be working on topic one, the vocabulary. And during this topic, we're going to be um, just doing addition and subtraction within 20. So the numbers that we're going to be using aren't going to be larger than 20. Um, and a lot of the sums and differences won't get greater than that amount of 20. Um, I do want to start with some vocabulary. So um, the first word I want to talk about is an equation. Um, we're going to be using lots of equations during this chapter. Um, an equation is just the same you may have heard of a number sentence. This would be an equation for addition. Um, you could also have an equation for subtraction. Both of these would be equations. Um, I want to take a minute to just look closer at this addition equation. Um, when you're doing this addition equation, the answer for an addition equation is called the sum. So this green circled number seven is the sum. So when you're talking about what is the answer for five plus two, a more specific way to say the answer for that would just be called the sum. So the sum of five plus two is seven. Um, these numbers right here of five and two, those are um, called add-ends. So the numbers that are added, five is an add-end, two is an add-end. If I showed you a couple of other equations, and I don't even have to go um, higher than 20, I could say 13 plus five. Both these numbers are add-ends, and then the answer for that, the sum, would be 18. So here, these add-ends, we've got 13, and we've got five. And this over here is called the sum. The sum is 18. Um, the next thing that we'll talk about, so we've already talked about these couple of words, um, is the difference. The difference is the answer for a, a subtraction equation. So let's show you an answer, or I'm sorry, um, just an example of that. The difference. So I could say 13 minus, we'll just do an easy one, 3. What is the difference of 13 minus 3? The difference would be 10. So if I was asked what is the difference, it would just be that answer of 10. So that's what the difference is. And remember, this right here is still called an equation. I would not call 13 an add-end because those are not being added together. Um, the difference is 10. Add-ends only are talking about addition. So notice that hidden word in there of add, and that'll help you remember about the add-in is for addition. Um, so this equation has a difference of 10. The next term we're going to be using a lot during this topic is doubles. Um, we're also going to be talking about near doubles, which we'll do right after we do doubles, okay? So doubles. Doubles, I mean, I like saying this, double, double, this, this, double, double, that, that. I think about two of the same thing. So when I, repeat it, when I repeat that little chant, it reminds me that doubles just means two of the same thing. So doubles, the doubles for two, the sum would be four. Um, four plus four. Notice that both of these are the same. Those are called doubles facts. Um, memorizing your doubles facts, and notice that these are all addition, that's gonna be something that you have to do. Second graders, you must, 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 must. Memorize these doubles facts because you're going to be using them a lot. And as the year goes on, we're going to be using those for um, lots of more complicated addition and subtraction things. Um, so knowing these patterns are going to be really helpful. Um, so 6 plus 6 is 12, and so on. So those are called doubles. Now, if I'm talking about near doubles, I want to change just a couple of these. So I'm also going to be changing the sums because the equations are going to change as well. So 2 plus 3, I would say that that is a near double. It's almost just like 2 plus 2, but the 3 is one more than that. So I know that instead of being 2 plus 2, I know that in my head is 4. But 2 plus 3 is one more than that, so I would just have to add one more. So I know that it would be 5. Now this did say 4 plus 4, but if I was giving you a near doubles equation, I could say 4 plus 5. Well, since you already know that 4 plus 4 is 8, adding one more to that will give you 9, and that's what the near double answer would be for that. So notice that these near doubles are really close to a double stack. I wouldn't say that 4 plus 10 is a near doubles because it's not. It's bigger than, it's way bigger than um, 5. Um, I could say that 4 plus 3 is a near doubles. 
Um, and I could think of, hey, I already know that 3 plus 3 is 6, but I also already know that 4 plus 4 is 8. So it's going to be somewhere in between that. And so I know that 4 plus 3 would be 7. So using those doubles facts will help you, um, and your doubles facts um, will help with your near doubles. I guess essentially what I'm saying is that. So instead of being 6 plus 7 that I'm going to use for the example, I'm going to use 6 plus 5 because that's also a, an example. I'm really, really, really familiar with 5 plus 5 being 10 because I've also memorized my 10s facts. Um, so 6 plus 5 has to be 11. So those are just near doubles. Um, the next thing that I want to talk about are number bonds. Now, this math curriculum doesn't necessarily talk about number bonds a whole lot, but having this background knowledge that you've already learned is going to be really, really helpful. Um, a number bond, so just to remind you of a number bond, they look like this. They're going to be very similar to these bar diagrams um, and tape diagrams that we're going to talk about in just a second. So a number bond, essentially for a number bond, what you've learned is the large number goes at the top, and this is just like an equation. So when I'm thinking about a number bond, I know that 2 plus the 3 equals the 5. Now, on your number bond, you won't have this plus sign in there, but that is something that I kind of like to think about. So when I'm thinking about the number bond, I'm going to just use this other color. So 2 plus the 3, and then when I'm looking at these two lines right here, I'm imagining that those are kind of like an equal sign. So 2 plus 3, now if you tilt your head to the side, you see where it's the equal sign. Yeah, so 2 plus 3 equals 5. So that's how I would fill in my number bond. Here's another number bond. So let's just say that this is a 10. Oh, I changed it to my thinking color. I'm going to just go back to the black. Um, what if I only knew that this side was 9? So 9 plus the something equals 10. So I could write an equation about that, 9 plus something equals 10, or I could write actually even a subtraction equation of 10 minus 9, and that'll tell me what the, the difference is, and that'll tell me what goes in here. So these are number bonds. It's going to be very similar to the bar diagram. Um, so I know that the missing number is 1 because 9 plus that 1 equals up to be the 10. So this is just a, fresher, a refresher on the number bonds. It is something you should already remember, um, but we will continue to talk about that as we go into topic number one. Um, the next thing is a bar diagram. You may also hear it referred to as a tape diagram. They're very, very, very similar, um, just depending on which words that you use. Um, anyways, I don't even know. Um, <clears throat> they're, they're interchangeable, essentially, is what I want you to know. It, it could be called a bar diagram. It could be called a tape diagram. They mean the same thing. Um, so since we're doing the addition and subtraction within 20, I don't want my numbers to go greater than 20. Um, and also these look kind of similar. So I'm going to just do 10 and 10. So imagine this as 10 plus 10. 10 plus 10 is 20. That's, how, that's what a tape diagram looks like, is these two boxes equal the amount of the bottom box. Sometimes the bottom box won't be on the bottom. Sometimes the longer open one will be on the top. It's going to be the same way. So even if we were doing 20 and then we have 10 over here and 10 over here, it's going to be the same. So the distance of all of this is going to be the same. Um, and it has to be 10 plus 10 is 20. You would not want to put, so this is like a, a non-example. So you wouldn't want to put a 10 here, a 20 and a 10, because essentially what you would be telling me is that 20 plus 10 equals 10, which we know that is absolutely not correct. You use this bar diagram to also, sh also show an equation. So you want your equation to be true. So having this 10 and this 10 equal up to be 20 is what you want to be telling somebody. So your equation that would match with that would just be 10 plus 10 is 20. And so another bar, bar diagram example and remember I told you, you can call this tape diagram. It just kind of depends. They're both interchangeable. Um, I could say 3 and 7. 3 plus 7. Remember, that's what that would signify. 3 plus 7 is 10. So sometimes you might have a missing box and you might have a question mark there. That would just mean that you're looking for that mystery number. And I like putting a box there because it's easier to fill in once I'm... Um, 
once I've found the, the difference or the sum of what I'm looking for. Um, so 3 plus 7 is 10. There's another bar diagram. Um, the last term that I want to talk about is the commutative property. The commutative property just says, and this is about the commutative property of addition, it just means that you can put the numbers in any order when you're adding and it's going to um, equal the same amount. So essentially, I could say 2 plus 7 equals 9, or 7 plus 2 equals 9. And that's because of the commutative property. Now, that's just like an added little extra that hopefully maybe you can remember. Um, but essentially, commutative property, it's something you're not going to learn until you're a lot older. But it is something, because I like you to learn a little something extra, I want you to remember it at this time. And if you can, that's awesome. If not, we will continue to talk about the commutative property um, and all of these terms during topic one as we are using addition and subtraction within 20.